any sort of interest uh, from the broad community. But I think what I least thought about might be interesting to everybody. So as I think about OpenStack, and as I've been to the last three summits, I think about a collaboration uh, effort across multiple projects, a loose federation of states, so to speak. And so this is the obligatory overview slide, uh, but we'll talk a little bit about that loose confederation of states, i.e. the projects, talk a little bit about some historical lessons that we can glean from the Articles of Confederation and the U.S. Constitutional Convention. And if you don't know anything about that, that's okay. We'll go over a little bit about that. Uh, not an important piece in terms of knowing coming into it. And then just how do we work together as a community as we, as we go out of these, this summit this week to help us in our, in our efforts within the community. Um, so what I, who I am is I'm a lover of history. I've loved history from the time I was little. I used to think I was going to be a librarian uh, when I was growing up. And I love to read. I love to learn about Abraham Lincoln. I love to learn about George Washington. I love to learn about Martin, um, San Martin um, and a variety of other international uh, heroes. As I mentioned, I've been, this is the, my third OpenStack summit. And at the last one in San Diego, I stood around and you could very much feel the same vibe that, that's in this one. There's something going on around OpenStack. It's a project that's been around for three years now. There's a lot of excitement around it. And as I was thinking back about the historical lessons that I've learned, I thought about this time uh, over 200 years ago that may be applicable to us. Uh, by the way, I'm also a program manager um, in HP, uh, responsible for strategic programs and particularly cloud initiatives. Do you guys recognize this time? An unparalleled time of growth, of worldwide reach, of new social entities popping up, uh, new historical tra trade, uh, unrest across the globe. It sounds an awful lot like today, but in reality, what we're talking about is the year 1787. So if you think about that time of, of history, the United States was just formed, France was going through their revolution, Britain had been a world power and across the world in their trade, Spain, Portugal, lots of development were, were happening and lots of experimentation with social structures. And in this case, we'll talk about the social structure of a, of a written constitution, but there were a lot of experimentation happening around the world, very much like today in, the, in terms of the cloud space. What does it really mean to be a cloud? How do we define it? But in this case, from a historical perspective, the year is 1787. So for those of you who aren't from the United States and haven't had United States history, uh, the United States was really started from a 13 original colonies uh, back in the 1770s when they declared independence from Great Britain, who used to be uh, the, kind of the mother country uh, to, the United, to these colonies. Uh, through a course of events, they declared uh, their independence. They fought a, a war, a revolutionary war. And in 1781, the last battle was fought. In 1783, the actual treaty was signed. In the midst of this, there was an, a discussion amongst these colonies of how do we govern ourselves. So assuming this independence is won, then what? And so as they looked about that and discussed that, uh, they had continental congresses and discussions and groups, much like the OpenStack Summit this week and then previous ones and future ones, around where do we go from here? Well, in one of these congresses, they established what was called the, the Articles of Confederation, basically a, a method for them to govern themselves, this loose configuration of, of colonies or states, and putting themselves together, how they were going to govern themselves moving forward. And that Articles of Confederation officially were ratified in 1791, or 1781, sorry. So let's talk a little bit about what the Articles of Confeder Confederation meant. So there's a, I won't go into a lot of detail and, and it'd be boring if I, if I did, but these are some of the key things that I think translate directly to OpenStack as, as it exists today. And particularly the last probably six to nine months, because there's a lot that's happening in the OpenStack, in OpenStack arena. The first characteristic of these Articles of Confederation is you had these 13 colonies. Some were large, like Virginia. Some were small, like Rhode Island or Delaware. But each one, regardless of size, had corresponding um, the same amount of power. Whether they had a lot of people, small people, a lot of land, lot of small land, they each counted as one. So one colony equaled one vote. 
But what that happened was that the same, any, any of the small states could veto anything that the large states did and, and vice versa. And so there really wasn't a balance between them. There was equality, but that was a limitation. We'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. This Congress that had set up these Articles of Confederation did not have the power to tax, meaning that each state was still responsible for their own revenue. They taxed at a local level, and that local level money stayed at that, essentially that state, that colony. Now the limitation there, obviously, is that, that they really couldn't do anything among the states. And particularly as the Revolutionary War finished and those states had to pay the bills, those states were then responsible for paying their own bills and they didn't really share that bill across the state. So literally every state was unique. Every, in this case, Virginia paid its bills. The next door state of, of uh, New York or Pennsylvania paid its bills and, and very, very similarly that, that way. Another characteristic is that uh, Congress didn't have the power to regulate commerce. So very, again, very similarly, each state was almost a self-contained entity, doing its own thing, never talking to the other state, even the ones that are next to it. And each state having the responsibility to regulate trade, commerce, the things that make business go, things that make technology work on a day-to-day -day basis. They didn't have that power. There was also no, what we know, no, as the executive branch. So because each state was responsible for its own activity, each state then could dictate how that was enforced. Some states enforced the laws, some states let them go. Some states were more lee had more leeway, some states were more stringent. And so what that really led to was an uneven way of, across the United States as it was being formed, a way of, of institutionalizing and then executing their laws. There was no national court system, so you couldn't really appeal. If you had a disagreement, you basically took it to your local magistrate, and the issue there was, was, was settled locally. There was really, above the state, there was no additional uh, escalation path or any way to kind of reconcile any sort of disagreement. Amendments to the, to the Articles of Confederation required a unanimous vote, right? So if you think about OpenStack, and we'll talk about this in a minute, how hard it is to get a bunch of people in the same room to all agree, and then to all agree at once, and to unanimously agree on all of it, is a very difficult challenge. And the Articles of Confederation, for all practical purposes, once they were established, could not really provide any new laws because of this limitation. And then laws required a nine-thirds majority. So for all practical purposes, there were no amendments. There was no progress. Once it was established, it was great during the Revolutionary War. But after the war, as the states settled into it and as new states came on, there was really no way to enhance um, the system upon which they were governed. OK, so that's all good and interesting, a very interesting historical thing. But what, how does that deal with OpenStack then? So let's talk a little bit about that. So, from the perspective of, of each project. So within OpenStack, each project is not um, counted the same. You have the core projects, you have the integrated projects, you have the incubated projects, as well as you have the, the, the infrastructure projects, the testing projects. And each of those projects has a defined structure, but I think it's good that not all of them are considered equal. Because we wouldn't want, say, something like Nova that's critical to the compute and to the basic premise of OpenStack to have the, the same weight or the same requirements on it as, as something else that's just being incubated. So I think that's something positive from an OpenStack perspective. So the Articles of Confederation would say equality is good, one-to-one -one is good, but I think from a perspective of OpenStack, I think it's good that each project is taken on its own merits, and we have a, a grouping of them. Similarly, it was huge over nine months ago or eight months ago when the OpenStack Foundation was, was, was created because you had this loose configuration of, of projects. Uh, the core projects at the time I think were four or five, uh, and now they're seven to nine depending on how you calculate them. Um, but this way the foundation actually is the entity for which manages all of that activity. And much like the centralized government of the United States that was formed through the United States Constitution, OpenStack now has an executive branch, so to speak, that could manage um, the contributions of these individual projects, 
and essentially work as that broker between all of those individual activities. I'll just scan through these because. So from the OpenStack perspective, again, in terms of commerce and trade, there's activities that go on between the projects that should go on. The projects themselves are, are independent in many ways, but they are also interdependent in that, say, Nova has to interact with Cinder, Nova has to interact with the networking, and there's a variety of other interactions that have to go on. In a similar way to the states at the beginning uh, from the Articles of Confederation, the states didn't, they were very independent and liked that independence, but there was also a downside in the fact that they could inter interact and do those activities that they need to. I think the fact that the foundation was created to manage those interactions is a good thing. Likewise, from the bylaws perspective, there's an opportunity for the community to work together. The technical committee handles the technical questions, the board handles the business discussions, there's a variety of, of, of technical contacts, uh, the project technical leads handle everything within their project that needs to be, but there is an interaction there, and we'll talk a little bit about what, what, what we could do there. In the same way, in the technical committee, committee has, handles their dis disputes. And one of the final topics then, uh, very much to the limitations of the Articles of Confederation, we talked about not being able to amend it for all practical purposes. But when we talk about OpenStack, thinking about the future, we think about these incubated projects, we think about these integrated projects. There are some projects that are probably going to come out of this week's su summit sessions. How do we handle those sessions? How do we handle those projects? What do we do with them? What does it mean to be a, an OpenStack incubated project? I think as we look forward, uh, what are the rules by which we define our own community? And how do we establish those policies that will ultimately dictate what is a core project versus projects that are emerging? But also with an eye to expansion, right? I think one of the positive things about the OpenStack community over the last three years is it's expanded rapidly and changed. Anyone that stood up three years ago and could envision 2,500 people in Portland this week probably would, wouldn't have lasted very much. But the fact that we, we are here and that it has evolved in a variety of different areas, I think we have to plan for some of that, some of that uh, um, dynamicism and be able to adapt accordingly. Any questions or comments? This is the eye chart, and I promise this is as worse as it gets. Okay, so what else can we learn? So there's a lot of, of things that I think we can learn uh, from this time of thing. The first is, is about the whole community. I know from a technical community, it started primarily from developers, but I think OpenStack has, has reached a point where, very much like the Articles of Confederation and the US Constitution, where we're all working together. Users, develop oper DevOps, sysadmins, um, business folks, uh, there'll be a wide variety of people this week in, in this summit. And I think it's important that we think of our, about ourselves as the broad community. Uh, much like the framers of the Constitution thought about everybody, all the people that were, were part of this, I think we have to think about more than just our own, our own immediate needs. So what might a user want? We just heard an update from the user committee. What might those developers need? There's a lot of good discussions going on at the design part of the summit. What are these key areas around all of the community? Because I think it's all of the community that makes us grow and makes it OpenStack it better. I think we also need to consider governance. I know sometimes governance can be a negative term. Uh, we don't like to write things down and bylaws are just something that we read and write. But I think it's those bylaws, it's that governance that really helps us define what our community is about. How is the OpenStack community different than say the Apache community? or the Eclipse community, or the Linux community, right? It's that structure of governance that brings us together. And that's what codifies our interactions together. So sometimes we gloss over it, uh, very much like we do in terms of our laws, but it's that structure that gives us a solid foundation upon which to build. And I think the foundation, the creation of the foundation, I can't overstate enough, has done a lot for facilitating that moving the community forward and codifying exactly what the OpenStack community is. There's still work to be done. I think there's still work to be done in terms of the user committee. I think there's still be done in training and education and, and usability. Uh, but by and large, I think that initial structure is then and how can we help to contribute and work towards it. 
The other one is this common currency, right? So much like this, the states were set up back in the 1780s, uh, they were unique entities, the projects uh, or the states themselves were, were almost self-contained. I think we also have to think about ourselves a little bit more in, interdependently, um, that there's a common cur currency. Sure, there's within the NOVA project, within the SWIFT project, within all the other projects, there's a need to be able to uh, accommodate uh, our own activities, but there's also that cross-dependency where we don't exist in one project without the other. And I think just as the United States learned as they went into the U.S. Constitution and revamped the, the Articles of Confederation, I think we need to think about how do we communicate across those projects? What are the right APIs? It's that currency. Um, I think there's a limitation there. When the United States went to a common currency, it facilitated a lot of, of problems that were inherent with states deriving their own money. There was now one way of, of crossing borders, of interacting with folks across the border, of d dealing with commerce in a similar way from a project basic to a basis to a project basis. There, I think there's a lot of things that we can think about driving those APIs. What are the, the communications that have to happen across those various projects, across those various activities, and how can we facilitate that? From a usability perspective, what are the key things? From a metrics perspective, how do we roll things up? Again, so we're talking about the same thing. We're talking about the same currency and be able to then compare apples to apples and really let, launch our, our even projects even further. One of the other things that we can learn from the Constitutional Convention to help facilitate as a result of the Articles Confederation is, is people can make a difference, right? And I think everybody, OpenStack is unbelievable in terms of its trajectory. Literally, it was three years in Portland this, this summer where OpenStack was created or where it was open sourced. And now the community, the summit itself has 2,500 people. So people can make a difference. There's lots of opportunity to jump in. Do something new. Be part of something that's the first. Also, don't be afraid to challenge the status quo. So from the Articles of Confederation perspective, the, when they set up a new uh, convention, people came to Philadelphia in order to revise the Articles of Confederation because they knew there were some problems. At the end of the day, they just decided to throw that away and start from scratch. I think don't be afraid as you enter the community and as you get engaged to challenge what has been done. Again, there's a lot of things that are good. There's a lot of areas where the OpenStack community can be improved. And I think challenging the status quo is something we can also learn from history. Communication is important, all right? This whole idea of collaboration. Bringing together the, the pieces makes a, a broader whole. Uh, these individual colonies, these individual states came together over 200 years ago. Not, want, not necessarily thinking about something broader, but thinking about how they could work, better work together. That common currency, that collaboration, that communication around different pieces and projects. So wherever you sit and whatever project you sit and work on, whatever your passion is, there's a place for you. But let's work together and let's collaborate, and I think we can also drive the, the better whole than individually we could do, we could do together. And I, th I think you see that in the, just the, the sheer nature of the, the OpenStack community, as well as the uh, acceleration that, that it's taking. And don't be afraid, again, this idea of open, open dialogue. Right? On the mailing list, there's a lot of activity. Everybody has an opinion, uh, which is great. Everybody shares that, which I think we should encourage. And I think we should be also responsive to, well, listening to other people's opinions and being able to not feel bad because someone's challenging what we have to say. Um, back in, in the Constitution Convention over 200 years ago, again, these small states had one thing, these large states had another. There was a lot of bickering back and forth about how they're actually going to make that fair. Because the Articles of Confederation, again, again, remember that each state had their, the same power, big or small. So how do you work that out? Ultimately, what they did was they essentially settled on a grand compromise, where each state would have the same amount of, of votes in the Senate, but in the House of Representatives, it would be based on size. And so that was a great compromise, a great breakthrough in its time for us, against balancing these different constituents' needs. And so as we be able to make a better constitution, Thus, I consent, sir, to this Constitution because I expect no better and because I am not sure that this is not the best. 
That statement in and of itself closed the deal. After Benjamin Franklin, again, who was very well respected in, in his high 80s, mid 80s at this point in time in his life, and had lived most of his life overseas, stood up and, and said this. And for me, it's a reaffirmation again that lots of people will, will be able to share their opinion, but at the end of the day, moving forward, moving is going to be important for the community. And I think Benjamin Franklin, on, on hindsight, was absolutely right. There's some limitations to the Constitution. It's not a perfect document. But it stood the test of time and is now going on over 200 years for very similar reasons that we talked, we've talked about. Okay. And then this last slide, one of the things I love about history is if you don't understand it, you're liable to repeat it. Meaning that I think the, the lessons we can learn uh, from the Articles of Confederation, from the U.S. Constitution, and from other aspects of, of history are very important lessons. And I think for the OpenStack community, as we're just really starting to, to, to take that uh, launch point where the momentum is growing and things are really, really going, and, and they're going very, very well, let's continue that. Let's make sure that we can learn and not derail it, that we put a right governance process, that we're flexible, that we're adaptable, that we can communicate, that we can collaborate together, and leverage this week for all of your activities to have the conversations, to make the progress, and to move things forward uh, per your agenda, as well as the overall agenda of the, of the community. And let's work together. So thank you very much. I think, just in summary, work as one, make a difference, communicate, adapt, and move the community forward. Are there any questions or comments or emotional outbursts? Yeah, question, comment? So the question is, how much coordination is there between the OpenStack Foundation, the Linux Foundation, the Eclipse Foundation, the Apache Foundation, all, and all the other foundations out there? Um, so to my knowledge, there's very little. Each foundation is basically governed by their own, their own set of bylaws. And in as much as there's people that are in various communities that try to make sure thing, things are doing, to some extent the technology dictates that, because say developing an HTTP server, web server, is much different than the cloud. Um, so there isn't a lot necessary at the technical level, but there's also not at the foundation level. And to be honest, each foundation is set up differently. So if you look at the actual how the OpenStack Foundation is set up, which is more of a governance executive type model, um, very much like we've talked about, and the Apache Software Foundation where it's pretty much hands off. The foundation, the, so the Apache Software Foundation um, has less governance on a day-to-day -day perspective and pretty much leaves a lot of that decision making to the, to the projects themselves. Um, but there isn't a lot of coordination, at least from what I see. Good question. Other questions? Yeah, comment? So the question is, how can, do I have any ideas in terms of encouraging employees of companies to contribute more? Um, well, that's something that I deal with on a daily basis. So one of the things in my day job that I, I do is, is try to encourage and help managers understand the benefit of working within the community. And I think all of us probably get it. Um, and Dave Neary from Red Hat has done some, some great work here and has a great presentation just about the cost of going it alone. So in, the, in terms of the companies being able to contribute, you're much more nimble, you're much faster, you're much more flexible if you work with a group of people that have a variety of, of, of again, that whole community of developers, DevOps, sysadmins, et cetera. And when you work within that context, not only are your developers better, but your code and technology is better. Um, and overall, you get to time to market faster. And so for, for me, that is the key message from, a manage, from an internal company management perspective is working within the community helps us get to market faster and save costs, but it also on the front end then enables us to, to do more with our core value proposition. And so sure, we might have a little bit more overhead to work within the community, but longer term, the benefit outweighs the cost because longer term, we're working uh, directly with the community. We had our pulse within the community. We're able to help influence the community and make decisions and understand what those trade-offs are that are happening 
Um, but I think it's also almost manager to manager, and it depends on, I think, people that get it, get it right away. People that don't, it takes a little bit longer. Did that answer your question? Great questions. Other comments? Yeah. Great question. So the question is, as this United States of OpenStack grows, using the analogy from the slides, what do we need to focus on and where are the gaps? Um, I think there's primarily two, and I think they're actually being addressed. So one is the community really evolved from the developer perspective. And there's a, a huge missing piece around the user perspective, just being able to download this and not understanding Geek to be able to dive 50 into the, the bowels, but be able to say, let me take that project and download it, very much like Linux has evolved to, where pretty much anyone on the planet, including my kids, can download Linux and install it, and they're up and running because there's enough documentation and, and installed tools. I think that's one, is just be able to say, how can we make it easier for our users to use it? Because those are the ones that will then drive adoption. Uh, it's cool technology, and it's going to meet a lot of demands, but unless our users can do it easily, it's not going to meet as much sense as, as, as it could be. And secondly, this concept around the, the projects, right? So I think having some definition around what is an incubated project versus integrated versus core. There's a lot of focus at the core, where there should be, but there's this whole ecosystem of, of developers and of activities and of users that have, have ideas that we probably even haven't implemented or even thought about yet. And how do we put that into our system of structure to say, when that happens, this is how we deal with it. And these are kind of the steps that we go through in the checklist to say, have we thought about this or that or the other and how it inter interacts. So that concept of how do we move some, but something from an idea to an incubated project to an integrated project and then ultimately to a, to a core project, I think is also something important. Other questions, comments? Haven't heard any emotional outbursts yet. Everybody's ready for lunch. Okay, well thank you very much, have a great day. Enjoy your week at the summit.